Three, two, one, and we are live. What's up, CP family? Chat here with Tim, tiebreaker series number 076. We'll give everyone a few seconds to get on. Let us know you can hear me and see me all right, and we'll get the show started. So this tiebreaker, we're gonna talk about arguably the number one problem in junior tennis is um, these athletes, they don't perform in competition like they do in their practice. They typically perform, they play better in practice when there's no pressure or whatnot. And when it gets to the competition, they don't quite perform to the level that they feel that their true capability is. That's like the number one problem. And we're gonna dive into one aspect of that problem because it's multi-layered, multi-faceted. It's one of the biggest reasons why, why we made the blueprint. The blueprint solves a lot of these problems. Yeah. A lot of it can be physical, a lot of it can be mental, a lot of it can be consistency, a lot of it can be putting everything together, confidence, belief, etc. And we address a lot of those issues in the blueprint. But what I want to talk about today, um, based on some of the questions we've been getting in, is what's, what's some of the problems that's, that these athletes may be experiencing on the practice court? Or what's some of the pitfalls on the practice court that might be leading to this gap when it comes to competition yeah you know and we call that it's it's kind of like the it it's a it's a, a performance gap it's a you know it seems like it's just easier to perform in practice than it is in competitions and i just actually had this on a call i did with uh, it was a 15 year old girl today and we were talking about this very thing and um, and one of the things, so I asked, one of the things I, um, I asked her is, what's, what's the coach working on? What's some of the priorities they're working on? And one of the things she said was a swing volley. I said, okay, great, you know, it's working on a swing volley. So give me an example of a drill. And so she said, well, I stand at the service line and he's at the baseline and he goes and hits these higher balls and I, and I let her rip and, you know, and do the swing volley. And I said, oh, so you do like, um, um, you just stay there and hit swing volley after swing volley after swing volley. He goes, yeah. I said, well, how many times in a match will you do that? And she it was, it kind of went, it went silent for a while. And she said, well, not very often. And I said, yeah, not very often. And I think that's one of the real um, issues that there are is that practice um, isn't the same as performing in a match in a competition. Um, and so we're trying to bridge that gap and have a little bit more simulation of competition in the practice. Yeah, absolutely. So in this in this example of the swing volley, what what would be an easy fix to switch that drill up? Well, again, it's it just as, for us as parents, you just kind of we just, you know, it doesn't matter if we know a lot about tennis or not very much about tennis. Sometimes it's better not to know very much about tennis because we can just sort of put our um, thinking hat on and just think logically and just see once if the if the um, you know, if if the dots are connected. But I asked this girl that question. I said, well, what would normally happen if you um, were going to do a swing volley? She says, well, I would be recognizing um, a short ball. And I said, well, that's really cool. I said, because I know you've been working on that. That's one of your goals is that you want to be able to recognize and have better situational awareness of when that short ball comes so you can step in and take time away from your opponent and then go on the offense. And I said, so maybe in your drills, you might want to do a few, um, you know, situations that you have a short ball and you go and make your decision on where you're going to hit it the next ball coming because you're already offense so the next ball coming might be a floater that you can go and do a swing volley then i asked her i said well what normally you would what would you do in a match if you actually had that combination what would be the next thing to do he says well i'd go to the net i said well are you doing that in practice well no i'm just sitting there just doing swing volleys i said well then there you go that you know so when you talk to your coach, why don't we, or why don't you just go ahead and make a suggestion that you would like to do that? Because I know you like going to the net. This particular player is comfortable going forward, and uh, yet they're not working on those things in practice that the way she would actually do it in a match if she actually executed a point. Yeah, 100%. So you're saying just make the drilling more realistic and more situational uh, to, and changing it up so it's not quite as monotonous. Because it seems to be that it's a big problem if you go to tennis courts all over America and it's like just hitting ball after ball after ball after ball. So what, what, what you're, you're, you're pretty much saying you need to make it a little bit more situational and a little bit more. 
Yeah, and actually, realistic. Be, yeah, and, and that's a really good point. But being situational and being having situational awareness is actually a more advanced concept. And so I understand that the coach is wanting to break break it down. I understand that, um, but you can't just do that and not um, invoke the brain to understand the situation. And that's really good to be able to uh, not just tell the player. And that happens a lot too. And uh, one of the things you know. Parents is one of the things that I really um, learned was um, if I'm telling Bethany, for example, always what to do, she's never figuring it out for herself. If so, if a coach is always telling them just do this in this situation, do that in that situation, and I find that a lot, even in coaching in matches in tournaments where they say, well, just do this. The player has this weakness, just do that, and they're really not able to focus on the situation. They're just kind of in their mindset now is, oh, the coach told me this, this is my game plan, and sort of common sense and intuition and instincts go out the window. Yeah, it's almost like they're being taught what to think, not necessarily how to think. Or just be, just, I think sometimes we just don't realize that the, the tennis progression is, is different than say that you're learning a, a, a skill like math where you can really spend the time and think about things as you put together a problem. In tennis, you have to do it in real time really fast. And so there's just too many things you have to work on um, or think about to execute everything you really need to execute. So a lot of that already has to be in place in that muscle memory or in that subconscious mind. And if they're told what to do, that sort of blocks or that creates a, a block or a distortion from what's already in their um, training or, and what they're, what's ready in their memory. They, it just blocks that because they're too focused thinking about something that something just told them to do and then they can, they're not aware of, of the other things that are already in them. And we talk about that a lot is, uh, that's I think the number one reason why they can't uh, play at their capability. Yeah, and, that, and we address a lot of that with, with the off-court mental training. Um, but when it comes to on the, on the court, you know, so the, the advice would be to try to make it as realistic as possible to start bridging the gaps. What, what other tips do you have to make the practice a little bit more realistic so it's a little bit easier transition to competition? I think it really helps if you explain um, to the player you know, why you're doing something. And, um, and once they, they understand kind of why, uh, it, this makes, it, connects, it, it gives them a chance to connect the dots on you know, why they're doing it. Um, instead of just going through the motions. And that's another real issue. And one of the things I really would stress to parents is when you're there and you're observing a practice, you, if they're going through the motions, you can tell, you know, um, and they're not being mindful, they're just kind of just, they're sloppy. Um, that's usually a time when you gotta maybe close it down and not, and not be afraid to close it down. Or if they've lost their concentration or if they're fatiguing. Um, so again, there's those kind of issues that I think as parents, we um, can have a more working knowledge about and really be more observant and not be afraid just because we're paying someone to have a lesson for an hour doesn't mean that um, eight-year-old you know, Jimmy is gonna be able to last a whole hour focusing and concentrating on something that's a repet you know, repetition sport like tennis. Um, so yeah, you wanna simulate it with the, um, you, you want to simulate it closer to match play, but you have to, in practice, still break it down. But do a little bit of all that. Yeah. You know, don't just, just go one thing over and over and over again. Um, so I, I think that's really important to uh, break it down, but then make it make sense on how it would really be real, in real situation in a match. And you can be really a young player and understand that. Um, but then give it time to simulate. Then simulate it in a drill and slow it down. You know, a lot of times it's always about um, well, we got to have such high intensity, but no, it's the brain that needs to connect it. We can always get the intensity later. Yeah, hundred percent. It's like it's just being a little bit more mindful. Being like you, you said, another big problem is going through the motions. Mm -hmm. Like simply just not going through the motions with anything you're doing is going to solve a lot of these issues and bridge this gap into the competition. Mm -hmm. And I see Faye is checked on to the tiebreaker. What's up, Faye? I was just talking to her oh, today. Nice. Uh, and I was saying, this, this goes for your workouts as well. Like the biggest problem, one of the biggest problems in, in competition, in, in sports in general, is that people don't train with the same emotional, intellectual, intellectual psychological engagement 
that they do when they compete. Mm -hmm. So if they don't train with that engagement and they're just expected to turn it on in competition, there's a disconnect because they didn't, they didn't, they didn't turn it on in training. And now it's like, oh, it's match point. Now I got to really try. It's like, no, your rep of every, the rep of your exercise should be match point. Yeah, quality over quantity is huge, you know, and, and that goes all the way to the training. But now we're looking at, let's go with different ages, you know, someone that's say under 10, they're not going to have that kind of emotional uh, stability or that, um, you know, to be able to focus and give that kind of uh, intenseness in their mind and their, in their body, you know what I mean? So you still, you're really teaching them, you're breaking it down, but you're also making it make sense for them. And they're not, they, you'd be surprised what, how even a 9, 10 or 11 year old or a 12 year old would actually have the ability to figure something out if it's actually allowed to. And um, just let them do it. Don't always just tell them that they have to do this, this or that. They're over-programmed and they just don't, you know, they, they're just not free, you know, to, to, to just be, to think freely so that they can actually in real time um, use their instincts uh, to make the really good decisions that they need to make. Of course, that takes practice and that takes a lot of practice and practice, but you've got to get closer, as close as you can, simulating to how they're going to execute the point in the match if, in fact, you want to close the gap between how they practice and how they play in the match play. Yeah, absolutely. That's the name of the game is closing the gap, mm -hmm. making it as realistic as possible, breaking it down, and also cutting out, you know, sloppy play or going through the motions. Going through the motions is rampant as, as well. Yeah, and it gets into a lot of um, just attitude and approach to the game. But again, a lot of players, um, and this happened a lot, even with Bethany in the, back in the day, is that she wasn't ready to be on the court. She wasn't ready. She just wasn't ready to be on the court. Um, either the attitude wasn't there or the desire wasn't there, the motivation wasn't there. Um, and sometimes I think we think that that practice has to be fun, you know. But you'd be surprised how motivated players get when they're successfully doing what they're being asked to do in the practice, especially if somebody's watching them. So if you simplify and allow, allow them to have more successes in the practice, in the drills, and that is going to go a long way for them to really want to uh, be motivated to do the repetitions and to continue improving in the sport of tennis. You know, so again, that's just really, really important is um, to, to have them have the successes, a lot of successes. And that's what I even tell the coaches is that, you know, you're not, you know, you're jumping the gun and you're skipping steps if they're not having a lot of success doing what it is you're telling them to do in those drills. And that's really demotivating. 100%. Yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, for us parents, you know, we don't always know what it is that they want or they're supposed to be doing that would actually make it successful. We're just looking to see if they get the ball in, for example. But that's not necessarily success. You know, in fact, I was just going over that again you know, recently in a call uh, with a young uh, player. And, you know, one of the things that they were working on was to be more consistent. I said, okay, great. But what does that mean? Well, it just means that, or so what do you do to be more consistent? She says, well, that means that we have to, we do a 10 ball or a 20 ball drill. I said, well, so what are you trying to be more consistent? Just getting the ball over or keeping it in play or, um, you know, what, what are you being consistent about? And so she had to think about that. And the thing about it is that it really wasn't communicated uh, from the coach down to the player and the parents. And so when we actually talked about this and just define a little bit what they want to be consistent in. So for example, if you want to get 10 balls over or 20 balls over, you might want to do things like make sure you're breathing and you're relaxed, or maybe you lower your wrist and get under the ball and you have more height in the ball, or maybe you want to get more depth on the ball. There's certain things that you can do that are in your control. That's what you want to do more consistently. Yeah. So again, just a little bit more specific, a little bit more dialed in. It, it comes down to being more mindful and being a little bit more aware. Yeah. Rather than a little bit more generic and a little bit more, you know, lacks of days ago to go into the motion. Yeah, well, a lot of times it's because the goals are general. So if the goals are general, the priorities, priorities are general, usually the, um, the activity to go ahead and get those is pretty general. Yeah. Because there's no understanding. There's no deeper understanding um, or perspective of what it, what it is really trying to accomplish. And that's where there's a lot of frustration because there's such miscommunication between the, the coach, the parents, the players. They don't really, they're not really on the same frequency, on the same page. And a lot of that has to do where it's, it was because they haven't defined their development priorities and they haven't communicated them. 
And if they did, they're not doing them or somebody's not understanding them. Yeah, just real briefly talk about how you, you know, got one of our athletes, you know, today that you were, that you had a call with, how you got um, made strides to get their whole team on the same page. Yeah, it was really, it was was actually really cool. One of the first things we do in an exercise is that in this particular case, they have two different coaches, you know, one's more of a hitting, you know, one's more of a technical, and then they have a a fitness trainer that helps out and they actually do a lot of things that we we would do because they follow that program. And, um, and so I had them list the five top priorities that each one of these three team uh, players, teammates, um, these coaches were trying to accomplish. And then once we um, looked at those, we saw a lot of inconsistency. So for example, the fitness, the, they weren't communicating with the, with the coaches that are trying to do some, teach a different technical skill. Like for example, um, if you want to do the backhand, backhand slice, backhand drop shot, backhand or, or volley, you're working different muscles. And so if the fitness trainer doesn't understand that there might be some things that they can do to go ahead and strengthen some of those body, you know, those body parts, those, those groups that will help um, not only fire the muscles, but also allow them to have a little bit more muscle endurance uh, so that they can actually do the drill. Um, if they're not communicating, and they weren't in this case, so now what we did, we said, now we want to just communicate. Now the fitness trainer is going to know exactly what they're doing on court and what they're working on, what skill they're trying to develop, and then there's some specific exercises that can help accelerate that. So when the coach starts working on it, we have more success with the player immediately because the body now can respond to what it is that the activity is and not get fatigued. And actually, that's one thing we actually look for is how fast they're fatiguing. And if they go longer before fatigue, then we know that the fitness trainer is doing a good job. Yeah, 100%. So just getting everyone on the same page, mm-hmm. talking to each other, getting a little bit more specific, that's a huge one. A lot of people's goals are just a little bit too general. They're a little bit too general and it's hard to guide the training or even uh, maintain accountability if it's super, super Yeah, general. and here's a really a test you can do. Every parent, you can just say, listen, this is something really, really powerful. T- ask the coach if there's a coach involved. Um, sometimes it's a mom, sometimes it's a dad. They're doing some of the coaching. But if there's a coach involved, um, ask them to put down what the top five priorities that they really want to learn or they want your son or daughter to learn, the top five priorities, okay? And then now at least you have those written down. And then see once if in fact, you know, just test your child. Just test her to see once if what in fact that they're, if they're working on that, okay? Because at the end of the day, you want to stay in those same rooms you don't want to be going into different classrooms all the time, working on this or that when you haven't even, you're not even identifying or you're not even doing those top five priorities. And keep them at five. That's what I do. I just keep it at five. Sometimes they keep, they stay the same month by month. And a lot of times we flip them some more in there, take some out, and we mix it up a little bit. Um, and then ask yourself if those are actually being uh, worked on. And if there's real, real improvement in that, measurable improvement. And then when you go to those tournaments, with, when they decide they want to compete, you go to the tournaments, you ask yourself, you're, you're observing, are they doing those five things more often in the competition? And if they're not, they're not. You know, you just got to go back and say, okay, why not? Talk to the coach and say, listen, uh, I didn't see him doing that at all. It's just like, no way. Okay, well, we need to, you know, there's some things that we need to get, dig a little deeper into those concepts so there's a better understanding on exactly what the improvement has to be. And then the drilling and the, um, and the practices have to uh, align with that. Yeah. So. 100%. Hope, hope, that, got, hope that helps you out, guys. Um, you know, this is a really broad topic and we can go a lot of different mm-hmm. kind of, you know, angles at it. Um, th- thanks for everyone who, who's been submitting some questions. Um, if you guys don't mind, take some time, maybe a minute or two and think about what you want us to talk about on the next tiebreaker. Maybe something we talked about today you want us to expand on, maybe you got another topic or a question, just drop us a line in the comments um, and let us know what you want these tiebreakers to be about because we literally base this show off of your interaction, your questions, and the conversations that we have with everyone. So hope you enjoyed the show. Let us know how you liked it. Really appreciate you guys tuning in. I know there's a million other things you could be watching at 9 p.m. Eastern on a Tuesday. Thanks for sharing it with us. We'll see you next week, same time, same place. Peace. See ya. Love Love you guys. Take care.